Greetings, math friends. Welcome to lecture three of Introduction to Limits. In the first two videos, I established some notation. We talked about the two-sided limit, the one-sided limit, and we had picked specific values which may or may not be contained in the domain of the function of interest. In this video, we are going to look at when limits do not exist. And this can also mean that there is an approach toward infinity. So some things to note. A limit without bound does not exist. We can write D and E for that. Uh, this infinite limit does not approach a real number, which in this series we are looking specifically for real number values. The symbol negative infinity and infinity that we have here represent concepts and not numbers in the system that we're working in. So when we write notation such as this, where we write the positive infinity we can write it just as infinity, or we can put a plus there, or we write this with negative infinity for x approaching some value. These aren't approaching a real number, which is the way that we've established the definitions. So you could say that these don't exist, uh, or you could write this notation that shows that you know that as x approaches this value, you are tending towards positive infinity. This shows that you know more than just the limit doesn't exist, but you know what the limit actually is doing. And likewise with this one as well, if we approach another value and we go towards negative infinity, we can write negative infinity there to indicate we know where this is going. We could also have other cases where the limit just does not exist for whatever reason. If we look at this specific example, I have x approaching the real value 3 for this function. Now I've sketched this function over here so we can get a look at what's going on. Notice that we cannot plug 3 in for x and try to see what happens there because we would get a division by 0. Since we are in a classical algebra system, this is not defined for us. As we look over here, if I approach 3 from the right, you see that this is going towards positive infinity. And as we approach from the left, we are going towards negative infinity. This particular type of graph, it is plotted in two pieces because this is a discrete type of function. Discrete functions have more than one piece to them. Notice that this isn't a piecewise function because the expression is entirely within this rational expression, and we don't have separate pieces with domain restrictions for each piece. Over here, I had made note of the possibility of labeling just positive infinity or just negative infinity. But in this particular case, as we're approaching 3, from the right, we're hitting the positive infinity. From the left, we're hitting negative infinity. And since this has no right or left indicator, we're talking about the two-sided limit here. Since from each side, they go to different values that do not match, this is where we would write the D and E. We write D and E because there is not one particular value that we are actually approaching as a functional value here. If we had instead had a modification of this, if we say that we want the limit as x approaches 3 from the right, I'm putting that positive as an superscript here. If we were looking at the same thing, only approaching strictly from the right, so 
the two-sided limit is now restricted to a one-sided limit, we can actually say that this is positive infinity. Because from the right, notice that as we look at this approaching from the right, we see that we are going towards positive infinity. So again, this limit doesn't exist as a real number, but instead of just saying D and E, I can give more amplifying information by saying that I know it approaches positive infinity. So this gives me more information writing it this way rather than writing uh, does not exist again here because it does not approach a real number, but we do know that it is going off to infinity. Uh, again, if we do the left-hand limit, we could write negative infinity so it'll look more like this version here. Now that we've talked about infinite limits where we can approach infinity in a manner of speaking, what happens if we let x approach infinity? So I have the same function but two examples. What if we let x approach positive infinity? And what if we let x approach negative infinity? Is this allowed? Well, it's not a particular real number value. Again, these are concepts. But what does happen if we let x take on any real value as big as you would like it to be? What would happen? Well, I have an exponential function as an example this time, and it kind of looks like a reflection almost of the left-hand side of the previous discrete function that I had. So it's going to have a look like this. So a single plot, but it looks like this. So as we approach positive infinity, so we're going this direction towards positive infinity, what happens here? Well, we are going almost straight up. There's a, there is a slope to this, but it's really growing fast because it's an exponential function. We expect fast growth. This is going towards positive infinity. So over here, we can note this. So as x gets huge, the y value is getting huge. So now I have infinity in two places here, and this helps me understand a description of what is happening with this function. As my x value grows really big, my y value grows really big. It's not approaching a specific real number value in the x or the y direction. It's unbounded. And we have that term up here, a limit without bound. All right, now something interesting about this particular function, if we approach negative infinity on the x-axis, so we are approaching this direction, we're looking towards the left, approaching from the right, this is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, you may or may not realize that the x-axis is an asymptote for this graph, which means it's an invisible barrier, essentially, in the plane that the plot will not pass and touch or pass through. So as this gets smaller, as, this, as the x value gets increasingly smaller and smaller and smaller, we actually do approach a specific y value. Uh, this gap is going to continue to get smaller and smaller until it's approaching zero. This is a nice illustration here. We can approach infinity and approach infinity, or we can approach a negative infinity and get a real number value. A lot of notation here. Some new concepts are being added to our understanding of limits. So we've seen 
examples of limits that don't exist, and we see approaches to infinity both in the x and the y directions. Again, I'm going to leave some problems at the end of the video. Take a look at them, pause the video, try them, then restart the video, check your solutions. Hopefully you find some mathematics to enjoy with others in your part of the world. Cheerful calculations.